Okay, y'all, I am starting to make a, a block, <laughs> a feed block. It's not really a mineral block. It's not really a salt block because it's got minerals and salt and everything in it. So what I'm doing is I'm making some blocks about this size. Okay, I've never done it before. I've seen it done, of course, on the YouTube. So it's going to get in trouble again. I'm trying to figure out a way. This is the sweet feed, the sweet feed that I had made up. I'm trying to figure out a way to get it to where it's palatable, where it's edible, where I can get it to, you know, in my bait bottles or at the bait stations or whatever. But anyway, what I did is I, I uh, decided I was going to try to make a block. So I got a lot of sweet feed in this mix. You can go ahead and tell and see that now. Sweet feed's got, I mean, it's got... Uh, cornmeal, it's got uh, ground up pecans, it's got uh, brown sugar salt, um, just any, any, kind of, any kind of ground up chips that I could find or something, you know, instead of throwing a bag of chips away, if, they're, if you ain't eat them all but they done gone stale, instead of throwing them away, I take them and grind them up put them in a sweet feed thing, sweet, sweet feed container. Uh, so I got that sweet feed I'm mixing up some oats and some corn in there. Not so much on the corn. More, more oats and sweet feed than corn. Although I do have, you know, a right amount of corn in there. But uh, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm, I'm taking all the dry ingredients and I'm going to mix them up. Mix them up real good. And then I'll add molasses to thicken it up. Now, the plan is to, and, and you know, there's no really right or wrong way to mix this stuff. Uh, it depends on what you want to put in it. And put, I mean, there's no there's no wrong ingredients other than strychnine. You don't want to put that in there. But any you know anything else that you think would make you know good eating for a for a wild animal basically, uh, you can put in there. And you just add the molasses to thicken it up. And once you thicken it up um, with the molasses, you stick it in the oven for 15 minutes. Pull it back out when that 15 minutes is up, mix it up again, put it back in for 10, and then you let it uh, cool off. You put it in the container, the size of the container that you want to, uh, uh, the size of the block that you want will be the container that you use. And then once you put it in there and you press it real good, you're, uh, um, Stick it in the refrigerator, I think, for like overnight. So let's see how this goes. Okay, now that you got the amount that you want, all you want to do is take this stuff and mix it in real good. I like this. When I put the camera down, I get on it. But you put it in just this mixing bowl and mix the dry ingredients up as best as you can. And then you add the molasses. Right before you're ready to put it in the pan, you add, you add the molasses. And... Uh, you just kind of add enough, and it's just old regular grandma's original molasses is all it is. Unsulfured, whatever the crap that means. But anyway, uh, that's kind of what we're going to be doing. Trying to get this stuff, trying to find a way. I tried to make pellets out of this stuff, and I can't, can't make pellets out of it. I'm, I'm not giving up on that yet. i just trying something different. But uh, then you just add enough molasses to kind of thicken it up to kind of make sure that all the dry ingredients are have molasses on them somewhere or another. And then you uh, then you put it in your pan, stick it in the in the uh, oven. And that's it. Okay, what I got is I got the uh, the concoction. I got it baked, put back in the container, the sealed container and uh, put it in the refrigerator for, gosh, probably a couple of hours, maybe. Now, I'm gonna put it back in the refrigerator overnight, but I wanted to show you the finished product. Now, that's what you get when you, you mix the molasses in there and uh, you cook it. Cook it for like 15 minutes, take it out, stir it around a little bit, uh, and then cook it again for another 10 minutes and you put it in here and you press it. You got to press it down now 
You're gonna put vegetable oil on the inside, of course, because otherwise it'll stick to it and you never get it out. But you put vegetable oil in it, and this is what you got. Like I said, now it's still got some curing to do, and it tastes pretty good too. You get it on your fingers. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably drill a hole in it somewhere and mount it or hang it by a piece of rope or something and let it hang from one, like one of the bait bottles do and uh, see if they work on it in. The only thing that bothers me is the, and the only thing I don't know is I don't know how the outdoor conditions are gonna affect it. If it rains or something, is it gonna cause it to, um, is it gonna cause it to melt any? It's just molasses. It's good. In fact, when my wife and son got home, they wanted to know what I was cooking because it smelled good. <laughs> but I'm gonna put it back in the refrigerator overnight and let it sit overnight and then tomorrow. I made two of them. I made this one and I made another one. Now you can make them bigger. You can make them as big as the form it is you've got to make. Uh, it seems pretty hard now. I mean, it seems pretty firm. Uh, you don't want it so hard that they can't, an, an animal or whatever it is, can't eat it. But you don't want it so soft that when you put it out there, it just falls apart. So, like I said, this may be a good avenue for my sweet feed because I got a lot of sweet feed mixed into this, along with corn, um, corn sweet feed, and um, oats, just regular old oats that I got. Uh, but I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator, and let it harden up uh, overnight. And like I said, we'll see. I, it gets hot. I don't know if it gets hot enough to melt that molasses that's on there. Because uh, I had it at 350. The oven temperature I had it at 350. So, and it was, it was very malleable. I mean, I could move it around pretty good. So, uh, if it gets 350 degrees down here in the atmosphere, we got other problems to worry about. We ain't got to <laughs> worry about a... Um, uh, a darn deer block or something's gonna be the least of my worries. Have y'all ever seen that movie? Um, it's a long movie by. Uh, it's got Kevin Costner in it called Wide Earp. It's based upon the life of Wide Earp. It's a. Uh, it was on in there a little while ago. Um, it's a good movie. I've seen. It's been years since I've seen it, but I would expect that that movie is probably as close to reality as as possible i'm not talking about the one with uh kurt russell in it where he's uh, uh what's the name of that movie tombstone but you know the uh fight at the okay corral which wide earth and all of them fought at really wasn't at the okay corral it was up the street a little bit but the okay corral was the first sign that somebody had seen and they just kind of named it named the gunfight of the oak that okay corral even though it wasn't there at the okay corral itself uh, it was just up the road a piece but you know you know kevin not kevin why why he he was a lawman in several different places and he really didn't want to be a lawman but he was so good at it that he just kind of got cornered in it you know so much uh some people even called him a criminal because he was too enthusiastic about his job. Well, when he was in Dodge City, he was with a guy, uh, the Masterson brothers. Uh, I can't remember what the other one's name, but the one, because one of them got killed. Uh, but the other one's name was Bat, Bat Masterson. And he was about as ruthless as Wyatt was. <laughs> now, you'd think somebody who was, who was, you know, ruthless at that period of time and somebody who was as aggressive in that period of time would have probably died within that period of time that's not the case um after uh after things got to calm down he was able to retire from law being a lawman he moved uh, wide earth moved to alaska what is that he moved to alaska for a little while then came back uh, to california Instead of going back to Tombstone, Arizona, he went back to California. Well, he by the time he came back, movies were just now getting started, you know. And he was uh, he wound up being an advisor to several movie studios who were 
making these western films. As a matter of fact, he, uh, let's see. Yeah, he, he, he advised uh, John Wayne when John Wayne was first starting out. Uh, matter of fact, John Wayne said that he based all, all of the roles that he played as a, uh, a lawman, he based it on the stories and based it on the advice that Wyatt Earp had given him. Uh, talking about Bat Masterson, Bat Masterson outlived the Wild West. Matter of fact, he moved back to New York City. He was a frequent guest to um, Theodore Roosevelt at the White House when Theodore Roosevelt was a uh, was president. And when he died, you know what the job he had? You know what he was doing when he died? Bat Masterson died as a sports writer. <laughs> He was a sports writer. That's what that's what he was doing when he died. That's kind of neat. All you hear about is the violent stuff. You don't hear about you know what else they did. And, uh, some of the other stuff they did was pretty neat also. Thanks for watching. We're gonna check those blocks out in the morning. See how good they were.